Thanks very much, Warwick, and um, thank you for the invitation to, to speak at Weaver. Um, as Warwick said, uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, using carbon dioxide laser surgery as a treatment for equine sarcoid. Um, I'm glad to say that uh, one of my colleagues, um, uh, Ben Portis, uh, is also with me here today. Um, this is the first of two uh, talks about sarcoids. Um, so effectively, I'm the warm-up uh, act, I think, for Sabine um, from the University of Vienna, who's going to be following on from me. Just a little bit of background first about sarcoids, for those of you who aren't familiar with them. Um, they were first categorised in 1936, um, and they are a locally aggressive uh, fibroblastic tumour of equine skin. Currently, we recognise six different types. Uh, the fibroblastic sarcoid, uh, here we're looking... Um, uh, from uh, behind a gelding, uh, looking between his back legs. The varicus, or sort of scaly type, uh, this is quite an extensive plaque on a polo pony in South Africa. Occult lesions, often the early uh, start of, uh, of sarcoid, one of the early forms. Uh, this is a mare's brisket, and you can see quite subtle lesions that could easily be mistaken for, for instance, ringworm, or perhaps rain school. Nodular sarcoids, um, very self-explanatory. And then mixed sarcoids, where we have uh, two or more types of sarcoid present on one patient. And uh, unfortunately, as you can see from this poor horse, pretty much a walking textbook of sarcoid. And finally, um, the very rare, fortunately very rare uh, form of sarcoid, malevolent or malignant sarcoid, which is the exception to the rule, because this uh, tumour will metastasize, metastasizes via uh, lymphatic and or uh, blood vessels. So sarcoids have a worldwide distribution. In the UK, they're really quite common. We have a prevalence of around 7 to 9%. And they are the most commonly encountered tumour uh, that we find in equids, making up about 30% of reported neoplasia. And they are unfortunately the most common skin-related cause of euthanasia in equids. There's a plethora of treatments for them, um, including various types of chemotherapy, uh, various types of surgery, and, um, and also uh, radiation therapy, things like brachytherapy. With any condition where there's a plethora of treatments, then that suggests to you, of course, that no single treatment is universally successful in cases. So why do we use carbon dioxide uh, laser surgery? Well, I did have a couple of um, text slides, um, but then I'm glad to say Ben came to the rescue this morning and managed to provide me with one of our videos from one of our patients. Uh, so um, here we are doing uh, laser surgery at, at Hayden Lee. Um, you can see that it's pretty much bloodless surgery. We get really good hemostasis with the laser. Um, so that means that there's a lot less tissue handling, there's no clamping, swabbing, um, tearing and shearing of, um, of tissue. And uh, the laser cuts at about 95 degrees Celsius or just above, and so we get very good cauterization of the wound, so we get very little in the way of secondary infections uh, when we're using the technique. Um, and of course there's far less risk of seeding tumor cells um, uh, than there will be when you're using a scalpel. So, um, a really nice technique uh, for, uh, for excision of, uh, of tumours, a really very accurate technique as well. Once we finish the, um, the surgery, the excisional surgery, I then run over um, in a very painstaking way over the surgical bed, uh, to, again just to uh, improve um, cauterisation and to make sure that there's no uh, contamination um, with any uh, remaining neoplastic cells as well. So um, that's the technique that we use, and um, these are the results of the, uh, the study that we did. Um, we surveyed or managed to follow up 47 patients um, from Peyton and Lee. Uh, they were surveyed in March of 2012. It was a random selection. It was basically those owners who replied to the survey that we sent out. We had 46 horses or ponies and a single donkey. 
the, uh, the mix of mares to geldings, um, over-representation of geldings, uh, which fits in with the literature, uh, which suggests that there is a higher incidence of sarcoid in geldings. About 53% of our patients were aged between 6 and 10 years of age, which more or less fits in with the sort of peak incidence that's usually quoted for sarcoids. Our, um, our patient predisposition was a little bit older than, um, than the usual quoted uh, six or, or younger, but that's probably because the, um, the practice has a lot of competition and sports horses uh, that are patients, and therefore you expect these animals to be a little bit older. 15% of the patients have a prior history of uh, treatment of uh, one form or another for the condition. The patients were um, treated between August 2008 and September 2011, and that gave us a follow-up of between six months to 42 months uh, post-op. All of these cases were treated with laser alone. Um, we now, as pretty much a standard adjunct, actually after uh, surgery, use a cyclovir, uh, much of which is obtained from the University of Vienna Vet School, um, as a standard adjunct to, to surgery these days. But these were just laser surgery alone. The data was supplied by contemporaneous uh, clinical records uh, and also from a questionnaire which was done by one of my dissertation students at Nottingham Trent University in the UK. So the headline results that we got, we got very high rates of remission at the site of surgery, um, 92%. We noticed that um, prior treatment failures, however, more than doubled um, the risk of recrudescence, so uh, a very poor prognostic indicator. The horses returned very rapidly to work after surgery. 57% uh, um, went back into, uh, into work within one month. And in fact, the researcher, uh, the student who was doing the work for us, said that rather than categorizing the re return to work in months, uh, we should have categorized it in weeks because uh, many returned to work that quickly. A further 23% went back into work uh, within two to three months. As you'd expect, perhaps uh, when we're using a laser cutting at 95 uh, degrees Celsius, we get very little in the way of secondary infections, and those that uh, we did get responded to just short courses of uh, potentiated sulfonamides. And this had very little influence on the return to work. We had uh, high levels of client satisfaction. Um, not surprisingly, they corresponded uh, quite closely to uh, the remission rates that we got as well. 66% said they were very satisfied, and 21% said they were satisfied with the surgery. A little bit about um, recrudescence. It seemed to be quite evenly uh, distributed post-op, which was something of a surprise. Uh, we saw recrudescence anything from six months to 42 months um, post-op. And so I think it's probably wise for us to talk to clients about their horses being in remission um, after treatment, rather than talking about a cure. And it's important, therefore, also that owners um, don't uh, uh, go away and no longer look for sarcoids. We always advise owners to be vigilant uh, in uh, the months and years after surgery uh, to make sure that there are, are no signs of either recrudescence or new tumours uh, appearing at other sites. We had an even distribution in recrudescence between mares and geldings. And the significant factors that we found that... Um, uh, that uh, predisposed towards recrudescence were, as we said before, a history of prior uh, treatment failure, which more than doubled the risk. And that suggests that really we need to be using the most appropriate and the most aggressive therapy first time around, because otherwise we're going to be prejudicing um, future treatments. And also animals which presented with multiple sarcoids were also at a higher risk of recrudescence. And that might suggest, for instance, that these animals perhaps had a particularly aggressive type of sarcoid or possibly a very aggressive subtype of bovine papillomavirus uh, underlying the etiology uh, in these patients. As I say, we had 87% of, um, of owners who were satisfied. Uh, this seemed to be unrelated to where the scarring occurred. We had scarring of some uh, kind uh, occurring in around 45% of cases. And obviously the scarring was uh, correlated to the size of the tumour and also the anatomical sign that we had. So something like this over the shoulder where there's not a lot of spare skin and something of this size, this weighed about, um, just uh, tipping the scales about 400 grams. 
Um, you would expect that this is going to leave some scarring. Here we are, I think, three months after the surgery. But the client was um, delighted with the result and uh, no recrudescence after the surgery. At a site like this, though, um, although the patient might disagree with us, that there's plenty of spare skin at this site. There is. It's a very good vascular site as well. Here we are just four weeks after the surgery. Um, just a small scab to come away, but a really good cosmetic result. So I think it's very important to brief the owners carefully uh, and to manage their expectations, depending, uh, as I say, on the size of the tumour and the site where we're going to be doing surgery. Although it is rep uh, reported in some um, uh, of the literature out in the United States and from Canada, uh, we've never had any instance of white hair regrowth coming back at the site of surgery. So 85% of the clients would recommend um, uh, laser surgery for sarcoid treatment, and 70% of uh, the clients thought that the treatment was value for money, always a bit of a thorny issue of course with owners. Um, it obviously, again, had a very strong correlation with recrudescence and, um, again, this points out the fact that it's very important, I think, to manage owners' expectations. Um, for instance, if they're presenting with a history of multiple treatment failures behind them, or alternative to the horse uh, is absolutely riddled with lesions. And there was also um, a strong correlation with GA cases because um, those animals which had to undergo general anesthesia for the procedure, that more than doubled the cost of the procedure for the client. So in summary, um, carbon dioxide laser surgery offers um, very good uh, remission rates, uh, over 90% at the site of surgery. Those complications from the surgery were minimal and easily resolved. The significant prognostic indicators that we found during the study uh, were a history of prior treatment failure, which more than doubled the risk of recrudescence, and those patients presented with multiple lesions. I'd just like to thank, first of all, um, Ben and his partners and staff at uh, Peyton Lee, where we did the study, and also Nottingham Trent University, uh, where I'm a visiting fellow, and particularly Caris Clarkson, uh, who did the survey work for me. Thank you. Any questions? Very good. Jeremy, I've got a question. Um, there are 47 cases, and when you, when you talked at the outset about six different kinds, so it's pretty hard when you face on 47, although it seems like a big number when you start to break it down into the type of case. Did you, did you, or were you able to associate recrudescence with any particular type of sarcoid and or its location? Yes, we were. Um, definitely the fibroblastic lesions were the ones that we saw most recrudescence in. And I think probably um, those areas where we weren't able to get very good margins around the lesions would be the, the sites of which would be most um, wary of getting recrudescence. Do you have any on the inside or the outside of the hop? Yes, yes, we certainly have had. Um, generally, actually, remission rates have been good at that site. You have more luck than I used to have. That's good. Did you, did you uh, try to do this where, like in periocular sarcoids, where you can't, probably can't remove the whole sarcoid? Did you try there? Yes, we have. In, in fact, last year at Beaver Congress, I presented a paper about using carbon dioxide laser surgery in conjunction with photodynamic therapy. And that's my choice, really, for those sites where we can't get a good margin around them. And that's really why I started using PDT as an adjunct here. Yeah. Other questions? Anyone who's been in practice for a long time has had to deal with some very refractory sarcoids, so that's quite encouraging. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks,